That's totally the wrong place. Hello, beautiful people. So today, one of my patrons, Simon, is coming over with his Iveco and I'm going to be fitting his diesel night heater. So my plan is to show you how it's done. Let's give this a go. Simon has just arrived with his very large Iveco and because it's raining, we've parked right next to the Luton and opened out the canopy, which does appear to be falling apart now but it's had some good use so I can't complain too much of that and just down there on the floor is Ted's cone which he killed earlier and here he is the man himself making a coffee good morning coffee right anyone coffee time and then we're gonna get this diesel heater fitted and working so this chap can actually have a warm night's sleep. You've had a few uh, a few cold nights, haven't you? Yeah, the whole winter. I've had minus two inside the van, no problem. Did you get that? Minus two inside the van. That's pretty harsh, so I think we'll get his heater fitted. So, someone... Me. May have ordered the wrong part for mounting this diesel heater. We need to get this fixed, so what we're going to do is I'm going to make a bracket uh, rather than try and bodge it, we'll do a proper one. So I get to play with the plasma cutter, you'll enjoy this bit. There we go, we have a base plate for the diesel heater and I'm just going to put a couple of spot bolts on that to attach it to the heater base and then we're going to fit it into the van. I think we're happy with that. Warmth. Warmth, heat, real heat. Hang on a minute, you've got a wood burner in your van. Yeah, but it doesn't work in the morning. I could always light it. Okay, so just mark the holes where the exhaust and the air intake can go through the floor. I'm going to put a small drill bit through first just so we can make sure there's nothing fouling it on the other side and then afterwards we'll go through with the hole cutter and uh, make a couple of nice big holes in his floor. You're Don't looking damage you're, the van. You're looking forward to this aren't you? Yeah. There we go, we have two nice... <clears throat> Oh, we have two fingers. <laughs> two fingers through the holes, nicely cut holes, ready for that diesel heater to go straight in. And I've raised it up off the floor a little bit as well to clear the pipes nicely. Wow, look at this. We have lunch prepared as well. Now that is good service. Way to a man's heart through his stomach. You just want the um, the diesel heater plumbing into the fuel tank, don't you, really? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so the internal part of the job is done. The next bit after lunch is the fun part where we have to drop the fuel tank out, drill into it, and connect the fuel supply up. It's all good fun. But first, it's time to eat. We have a result. We have a fuel tank that is now detached from the vehicle. And on that note, my job is done here for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Get back on. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially what we've got to do is take the sender unit out, drill a hole in the tank, and then I can put my hand in through the hole for the sender unit and do up the nut on the outtake of the fuel pipe for the diesel heater. Stay tuned, this could be fun. Boldly going where no man has gone before. And probably where no man will want to go again. <laughs> right, so we have set the pickup pipe. Homemade. Homemade. 
a drill bit, the right size, and a fuel tank. Wish me luck. I'm just gonna put my hand underneath as well, just in case any swarf drops through. Should we go with there? Yes. Yes. Swarf's better than blood. True, hand is now moving down. No, hand is moving away actually. This is not a good idea. I've picked a blood drill bit. It's like performing surgery with a butter knife. Yes. Any time today, Rich. No problem. Oh, we're through. That is totally the wrong place. Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> now, what we're doing here is we've decided that lifting a 30 kilo tank of diesel back up into the chassis rails is probably going to be a little bit tricky. So, squirt by squirt, we are pumping the diesel out of the fuel tank into a plastic container. When I say we, I use that term loosely. Simon is squirting the diesel into a container. Because if Richard was doing it, he would be squirting it into that pipe, oh, on the side of his looting. Well, I was about to say, this container here, it's the wrong one. Where it really should be going is into this one. So I'll just go and get you a longer pipe, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> This could take a while. So I don't know if you can actually make it out, but there is the fuel take from the tank. Here we are just underneath the van and you can see there is the exhaust and the air intake for the Epispatcher. And that is closely followed by the silencer. And you can probably just about hear that it is actually working. I've connected up the power to the heater. And just there you can see the thermostat controller. And it's just setting itself up now. There we go, nice and neatly installed and working. There we go. One working diesel heater, one toasty van. The smiling face says it all. The smiling face says it all. We've even got some extra USB ports in there for good measure as well. Happy days, happy with that? Very happy, thank you Richard. Excellent. Right then, no more freezing cold mornings. What I need to do now is get the trailer on the road. So the first thing I've got to do is go and get some new wheel bearings. I took the hubs apart, or I took a hub apart, and found that one of the wheel bearings, the seal had broken. So I'm just going to replace all four because the mileage I'm going to be doing with it, I want it to be working properly. So let me just show you where I'm at with this. That there is the hub without the bearings in. And in these bags here are the old bearings. I'm going to go to a bearing supplier, take these old ones with me and see if they can match them up and get some nice new ones and hopefully by tonight I can put those in. So let's go on a little road trip to Worcester. That there was a really helpful engineering supplies company. I walk in with a bag of greasy, dirty bearings and they find all the new ones for me. They've got to order them in, so in a few hours time I can come back and collect them. Happy days. Now I'm just making up some little threaded brackets. I'll show you what these are for in a second. Let's make another one. They're a bit hot still.
Okay, it's pouring with rain, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet, but I'm really excited because we've got trailer lights. Look at that. Working lights. Oh, my days. It's starting to look like a working trailer. LED lights that all work. Well, good morning. It has been an absolutely torrential night of rain and i felt this morning when i woke up as if i was in it and guess what i was i got a wet bed again and i can't work it out because the water that's landing on the mattress is coming from the bottom of the cupboard at the bottom end of the bed but the back of the cupboard is the wall and it's dry inside the cupboard so something really strange is going on somewhere but until I get a proper dry day, I'm not going to be able to sort this out. So for the time being, I've just wedged a towel at the bottom of the bed. And yeah, that's taken up the uh, the water. If you're doing a van build, I cannot stress enough, make sure it is 100% watertight before you start. This corner of my van did have a water leak at the very beginning. And I don't think I actually paid too much attention to doing it because I was so eager to get on with converting the van. So I'm kind of paying the price for that now. I just hope I don't have to actually pull all the ceiling down to try and find this leak eventually. But it's coming in from outside, so in theory I can block it off from outside. So fingers crossed. Here I am on a very precariously balanced ladder looking for a leak. Not the sort that you eat, but the sort that wets my bed. And I think I've just found the culprit. In its former life, or one of its former lives, this van had an air vent pretty much in line with where the cupboard is above the bed, where the water's coming in. So I thought, let's go and have a look. So I've taken the vent off to find that the piece of plastic that was behind it has completely perished, and now I'm left with that. And as you can see, it goes right through to the Celotex insulation. I'm now going to put a nice metal plate over this, stick it flexed in, and hopefully that will mean no more wet beds. I promise it's still not an age thing. Today is a beautiful rainy day, but that's not going to hinder me for getting the trailer brakes stripped down and the bearings fitted. I'll put some kind of canopy outside and get on with it. And I would love to report that I had a dry bed last night, but even still, after the second repair attempt, I've still got a wet mattress, so the mystery continues. Where are you going? You want your ball, don't you? He wants to go out for a run. Did I say run? Sorry. Yes. Uh, but it's raining and very muddy, so we might have to stay in for a little bit longer. But today is a video day, and today's video is the one I'm recording right now. So this answers a question that I keep getting asked, asked by people. How out of date are my videos? How far behind do I run? The answer is less than 12 hours. I put the videos up as I make them. I record each week's video throughout the week and I do my editing if I'm on schedule on a Tuesday night but usually on a Wednesday and I upload them to Patreon for Wednesday evening and they're on YouTube on Thursday evening. So why do I do it this way? I like to keep it very real. I like to keep it very current because when you get to certain times of the year like Christmas and New Year and things, I think it's nicer that people see it at the time. So this year I released my Christmas video at Christmas and my New Year video at New Year, etc, etc. Also, with travelling around as well, it gives me the opportunity to be able to tell you guys roughly where I am, which areas I'm in and what have you, so I can meet up with people. And obviously, for work-wise, doing people's vans as well, that's pretty cool because it means people can just go, oh, why are you here? Could you do such and such? So it works well. So there you go. My videos are very, very, very current. So I've got some editing to do. My laptop is sitting right there while I copy some stuff to an external hard drive because the hard drive's full and then I shall be getting on with the editing. Until next week, see you soon and have a fantastic week. Much love.
We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like more information on how you can help support us and keep our videos coming, then please do check out our Patreon page. There's also a lot more information and our blog on beyondthevan.com. See you soon.